Okay, so Miss Anime Mad, um, well, the issue with your uh, uh, piece is that you didn't choose the right values. Values means how dark an image is, and the one that you chose wasn't, um, it was too light. Everything was way too light on the color wheel. So if you look at how it looked before, you see all of these light light shades barely goes below the middle line and where you need to be is somewhere here I know that seems too dark but if you're somewhere here it's easy to go light and then go dark but if you're up here it's hard to go lighter if your base color is already so light so what I recommend doing is going dark from the beginning get a good dark base color going second thing is let me get my brush Second thing is uh, the the tones that you chose were a bit too peachy, and what you need to do is choose tones that will allow you again somewhere in the middle that allow you to go red when you want, allow you to go blue when you want, and not be too saturated. But the tones you chose were a bit undersaturated, so again you're still below the the required amount. Um, think more about the form of the face. So you did good by. Uh, sketching out, you know, without sketching it, going straight in, trying to sculpt it, you did good with that. But I re what I recommend is continuing. Really good job though, all together with the face and the lips. Just need you to, to break down the shape of the nose next time. Try shading it a little differently. Okay, so let me talk you through what I'm doing. Right now I'm sculpting out the nose. I'm trying to find where the tip of the nose is and I'm going to leave this a spot in the middle light to show that the light is touching it. I'm gonna add in a shadow because the eyes look like they're wide open and you don't want that. You want a natural looking eye, something that looks very relaxed and very beauteous. So what I'm gonna do is um, throw a gentle shade over the eye, the white of the eye. Only half of it should be visible, not the whole thing. Big mistake if the whole thing is visible. Okay, I'm also gonna go into liquify and I'm going to I better not be muted, okay. Um, and I'm going to apply everything on the symmetry line. See if I could uh, balance out the horizontal and vertical symmetries. And if you have haven't already watched them all, if you've watched only one video, I recommend Miss Anime Mad to watch the rest of the videos that I've made. I've made them specifically for students that are starting out, students that don't know what to do when they want to draw a nose, when they want to paint a nose. And I really recommend um, you go through how to paint a nose, how to paint eyes, how to paint, and that, all of that is on my DeviantArt page. So I made it very easy to find. You don't have to go uh, fishing for it in my uh, YouTube channel. So what I'm doing right now is sculpting. I'm trying to make it seem like the nose is sticking out. So that's why I added a light over top the nose. And um, I'm just adding some light on the upper lid. So what you've done is you've outlined the eye, but you haven't shown me where the lids are where the lid of the eye is. See, we have eyelids, things that, cr that that protect the eye. Whenever we want to close the eye, these lids move down. You can close them whenever you want. And you have to show that these eyes are there. So in the eye video, the main thing that I talk about is showing the function of the eye. Does it make sense? Does it look like this eye can work if you brought it to life? Um, and you have to make it seem like the thing that you're drawing, if it did come to life, it would work. And I'm just trying to show where these eyes are. These eyelids are, sorry. Adding some light on the inner corner and some darks on the outer corner to make it seem like the eye is coming alive. And you can see slowly, slowly, things are starting to look a lot more realistic. And it's not magic, it's just form sculpting, understanding where the eye is going, understanding what it is that you're painting, the function of it, the, 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 the sense of it. And it really comes down to understanding things scientifically. There's really no more um, artistic fever going on when you when you paint it. It's just really just basic logic. The, the inspiration and all that is when you break the rules, but like I always say, you have to learn the rules before you break them. 
And so this video, I'll probably turn it into a how-to video for people who have just joined the class, because I know there's like 20 people who have just joined the class in the past two weeks, past week, I think. The class is getting bigger and bigger, which is good. The family's expanding. There's more artists involved. But, uh, but, it, but it means that I have to give you I, each and every single one of you a personal conversation that will introduce you and I don't have the time to go through each and every single person so I have to make a video that will debrief all the new new members okay so what I'm doing is adding in the nostrils and Trying to form the nose, form the shape of the nose. And as you see, my brush is pretty big. It doesn't get small only when I really need it for small, small um, objects. And then as for the lips, um, the lips you've painted them very nicely. But don't forget the dark spots of a face. That's why I really recommend you watch other videos as well. Not just the one that I, um, on how to paint skin realistically. It's not even the best video that I've made. It's, it's um, it doesn't really cover all the important parts. Also, um, there's a video where I critique another person who's doing the 14 day challenge. And I really talk about the dark spots of a face and how to show that they're there in that video. So the values that I chose in the how to paint a face realistically is yellows for the light source, purples for the skin, for the dark spots of the skin to cool down the skin. And what I'm doing is just getting those yellows right now and placing them in all the areas that attract light. So the 12 or 10 light spots on a face, depending on the kind of face that you're painting. And these are just standard things. You have to have a checklist when you start painting. And if you have this checklist, you're not going to forget any of this, and therefore you're going to achieve more realism and more um, appeal in your drawings. And as you can see, the face has come, al come alive. It's the realistic version of what you painted. And now I'm just going to desaturate and turn these shadows into a purple so that they can make a little bit more sense realistically. Just cool down the shadows. All shadows are cool. All light is warm. Why? Because the sun touches. Um, the sun is light, and whatever it touches warms up. Just think of it like that as a little clue. bit of light here. Um, whatever this the face is the light. Remember I told you guys standard light is coming from above. Just learn that basic one you can start doing commissions through that. People don't really care. They're not really specific about the light. If they do ask for a light make it the secondary light and make your primary light the light that comes from above. Okay and now I'm just gonna make a color mode layer to get some purples in and it'll be finished and I'll show you the before and after. Okay, cool that down. There you here. I'm gonna add in some light on the I mean some blues. Adding more purples in areas like this. And if you want, you can also get that blush color that I showed you, the under light color, which is a very saturated peachy red. And what this does is it works very good for cheeks and lips. Do you see how the lips look very bloody? Is everyone seeing what I'm doing right now? I really recommend you guys. Even if you guys are familiar, even if you guys are seasoned veterans, uh, learning the, the basics really reintroduces you to the world of art altogether and portraiture. And it makes you um, think about what basics you've forgotten in your practice today and remember them and apply them and you'll realize your work is advanced exponentially. In the video I also show how to put in uh, greens under the eye. So I brought in a very gentle green to make it look like the eye is a bit more dark in that area. And that's pretty much what I talk about in the video. Um, dark spots, purples are for shadows, shadows are cool, lights are warm. Hey Carlo. And that's pretty much it. And this is good for a face, a basic face. Uh, I'll show you before and after. Before, it was way too light. Things were way too washed out. It seemed like you went into the saturation and increased the lightness. We brought everything back down to values. We fixed um, 
uh, all these different issues and we brought them in. When are shadows warm? Uh, when the skin underneath is essentially red shaped, uh, red toned. So if the color is red, so if the person is blushing or if they're really red or if the essential um, object underneath is red, so if it's a red ball, the shadow will look warm whether or not you've introduced the, the exponents of the negative or the, you know, the negative cool shadow. So when you have a ball that is red and the shadow is cool, it will still look red after you apply the purple and that's pretty much when shadows are warm. But shadows are very cool and that's the essential rule um, for that. So blue shadow snow. So the extreme of that is when you have no color underneath the shadow and that's when shadows reveal how cool they are when the sun is applied. So you see how the shadows are blue in the snow because it reveals there's no color underneath it so the blue comes out in full. There's no red or orange or green underneath to tackle this blue and make it look less blue. When you have white, which is snow surface, applied with sunlight, you're gonna have shadows. The shadows are gonna be completely blue. Um, this That's a stylistic ef uh, effect. Um, that's what happens when they break the rules, Mattia. You have to know when rules are broken and when rules aren't. When things look absolutely realistic, rules no rules have been broken. When things have a stylistic, bless you babe, when things have a stylistic um, uh, turn to them, when they look like they, you know, they look different, they look interesting, they look almost cartoony, almost anime, that's when uh, these, bless you, these rules are broken. Okay, Ellie, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, censor out the nipples because <laughs> kids might watch this later. And so I don't want them to focus on that. I'm not Mickey Mouse. Okay. So. Beautiful job on the stacking. Stacking is when you have, imagine you have um, one loaf of bread that's really squishy and you put another loaf of bread on top and then another loaf of bread and what happens is these loaves of bread stack on top of each other and they sort of become mushy and they look like they're stacking. This is what I mean by stacking and if someone says that and give you some like professional fine art crappy term for it which is like form and flow and all that, it just basically means stacking. It means that when something um, is sticking no, something is hanging off the bone and it looks like gravity is affecting it and it looks like the fat is there. So stacking in this area is really well done, to, um, uh, Ellie. What the issue is basically is that when you have stacking in one area and you don't have it in another and the other area looks like it's anorexic compared to, um, uh, compared to other parts of the body. Okay, so what you have here is that things are moving down, Ellie. This is a very intricate little tiny lesson I'm going to give you. Not intricate, I don't know. It's going to be a little bit complicated to understand, but try to stick with me. Here, everything seems to be falling down because you have this fat here, this lump of fat falling down, moving down, causing this little bump. You have the breast moving down very well. Good job on that. It looks very, very natural. And then you have things moving up. It does not look like the stomach area is pointing down like it. Why did that happen? What stroke did you make that didn't allow that flow to continue? Because the flow isn't working. It doesn't look like it's pointing down as if the gravity is pulling it. The main thing that you did that disrupted the flow, because you have a cut right here and then you have the movement down, is, the, is these tiny little strokes you did. These ones right here and here. What they're doing is that they're stopping it. Usually what happens to stomachs is that if they're a bit chubby, like yours truly, what happens is that they collect at the bottom. Everything up here seems a bit skinnier. And what happens is that just like a, a balloon full of water, they move down. It points down towards where gravity is. So imagine you're painting balloons of water. <laughs> water balloons everywhere. Don't make it look like you, you're the Michelin guy. Just make it look like it's a form attached to skeletal, skeletal structure, but there is bunches and bunches of fat hanging off the skeleton causing that. Also what happened is that the light and the form didn't continue because you have light up here but you don't have light on the shoulders which which capture the light a lot. Do you see what happens as soon as I laid in the shoulders the light on the shoulders. Do you see what happened um, Ellie? Do you see what happened? Do you see that subtle subtle difference but it makes all the difference that subtle stroke but it made all the difference in the world? Yes, women do consist of water balloons. What this light did, what I added just now, it made the shoulder pop out. It made the shoulder pop right out of the 
image. There's a really fun painting by a guy named Christmas Socks on DeviantArt. He painted a picture of a girl. He sketched it, and the girl um, seemed like she was trying to escape the um, the wall. She was sketched on a wall. And here we go. And it's a really, really good example of how form emerges when you have very basic sketches up here, like cartoon. And then um, I wonder if I'll, if he'll get mad if I if he knows I'm teaching with it. But do you see what happens when he added the secondary light source? These lights, the white lights here, the white lights on the rim of the uh, on the edges of the hand. It made it seem like he. It made it seem like the, the image is actually moving out, but really it's just a 2D image. But what he did was he compared it, he, he laid it beside an object that is not, that does not have um, form applied to it. And so this is the perfect example of what happens when you apply light in degrees. And what I'm trying to tell you here is that you need to add light in degrees to get the, the, the feeling of, of form sticking out. Do you see what happens now that I added it in? There's also a little bit more on the breast area, just on the tops where the light is reaching. Up here. There's also a tiny bit in between the breasts where the where the chest is pointing upward. And then the collarbones that you have. The collarbones are way too high. They're not low enough. Remember the collarbones are just the shoulders. Um, the bones of the shoulders moving past into the chest area to help attach the shoulders on. It's sort of like the, 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 the stability or the weight that keeps the joints of the shoulders together. And that's why it hurts so much when you're in your shoulders when your collar is broken. You can't sleep on the entire bone area in that, in that spot because it's one big family of bones. And so when you think about that, you realize, oh, okay, well, I can apply that by knowledge of biology to my art. Well, the, 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 the shoulder starts here. The collar should end up there. Do you see that? Just like there. And then that's where the collarbone is, adjacent or parallel to the shoulders, as you can see. A little bit lower. Okay, the neck seems a tiny bit too thick. Make sure that you don't thicken the neck up too much or it'll look very, very masculine, very androgynous. And make sure that random bumps and, and lumps on the shoulder should not be there anywhere else to keep everything symmetrical. And then um, for the arms here. We have sort of bump of the elbow which needs to be shown. So today me and my husband are in Walmart and lo and behold on our way out what did we see? What did we see on our way out? Two dogs and they were inside a car and the car was closed and they were barking their head off and there was one window, two windows, one was really like, barely open but the other was so I'm just going to count it as one window, honestly. And the dog was inside barking. There were two dogs, tiny little ones. And they were just barking. And we were out there maybe for 10 to 15 minutes. And the person was there parked before we did. No, after we came in. And so you could you could guess that. And I was there for 45 minutes. So you can make, you know, bet your butt that they were there for more than 30 minutes. A dog in a car in this heat for 30 minutes. Um, we called the police, but we had to leave. We told the employees to call. Or whatever we did. It's unbelievable. Like these retards leaving their dogs in, in cars. What is wrong with them? You can't leave a dog in a car for more than 15 minutes tops. On the PETA site, if you guys search up on the PETA site, it'll tell you exactly what to do. You can't leave a dog. You leave it at home. You can't just stop by for a minute. A minute turns into 30 minutes really fast and the dog can die um, in, in, in 15 minutes. That's the estimate. 15 minutes, a, do a dog can die of heat stroke. And it's unbelievable how people do that. It really pisses me off so bad. But we had to leave, and I wish I just gave that person a piece of my mind. I was waiting for them to come out, but oh well. And 
15 minutes, a dog can have a heat stroke. And 15, same with a human being. But dogs can't sweat. And we have a, a faster chance. We have a greater chance of living because we can sweat. We can sweat off the heat. But dogs don't sweat. All they do is pant. And so what happens is that their lungs collapse. Um, before the heat... Um, something something about the heat stroke and how their lungs collapse before it. So they're already wheezing. They're already having a, a lung attack or whatever. And they're in the middle of the heat and they don't know what to do. That can't be true. They breathe fast. Well, they're breathing fast because they don't have sweat glands. So they, they pant. And, they're, and they lick themselves to get the sweat, to get the water to cool them down. And when they're they're dehydrated. Their 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 spit becomes curdy, not fl like watery, and so they can't do that for themselves, and they just get heat stroke really fast. And the damage is, is is continuous if you save them. Even if you save them, if you're like ten minutes late, the damage is continuous because it damages their brain because of lack of oxygen. And um, what's it called? The dogs as we approach the car were howling like they were howling like. Arr! Like, what kind of dog does that? Like, unless they're in pain. Like, I've really never seen that before. It really pissed me off. It really grinds my gears. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is introducing some darks to get, um, sort of the form going. And I'm trying to make it so that it seems there's there's levels on the, on the stomach. Levels and, and valleys of fat. It wasn't a wolfy dog. It was like a tiny little... It looked like a capuchin. Or not a capuchin. What are they called? The small ones? There were two small dogs. They looked like Scottish dogs. They weren't really Scottish. I don't know what, I don't know what they're called, but they were tiny. And, they were, they were, and one of them was a bit bigger than the other one, and he could reach the window, and his nose was stuck on the window. And he was like this. <laughs> like, I know dogs pant, but that just was scary. It sounded hoarse and... and a bit panicked. I just hope that person got what was coming to them. Two dogs. And then they had this really expensive car. It's obvious they bought them for show. They looked like expensive dogs. Stupid assholes. I'm surprised other people didn't do anything. Like other people. There were no other dogs in there other than one dog that was with the. This disabled person, but he went down with him, I think. Okay, so do you see what I'm doing, Ellie? Do you see all the differences? And it's very just self-explanatory when you look at it. You're just applying the light, helping the body emerge. Do you see what happens? Before, things are a bit flat in certain areas. And do you see what I meant, how the stomach was pointing up? It seemed like she was so skinny that it was... Uh, it was, you know, sucked in, the stomach, but then the breasts were really fat on the top part, and so the body fat didn't match. Remember to keep the body fat and the body type matching throughout the painting. Make sure you're not painting skinny legs with a, with a very heavy, top-heavy um, body. Okay? And that's pretty much all I have t for today, um, for this, not for the whole class. Some of you are like, what? Um, but get rid of the hair. I don't want the hair. The hair gets in the way. The hair needs its own lesson, its own study um, study hour. So don't don't try to tackle hair along with this. Keep the hair out of the way. And just focus on the body for now. You should do a separate study just for hair, without a body or a face or a head. Just on the texture of hair. And then add in a head to see how the hair falls. Because hair is all about gravity. Hair does not defy gravity unless there's wind. Okay, so no more hair. If you're going to continue this for 14 days, which I recommend you do, um, no more hair. And we need ears. Or some sort of suggestion of an ear. <laughs> Okay, I would also recommend darkening this area down here. I'm not sure if they were schnauzers, honestly. I don't know. Dogs. I've never owned a dog. I can't because I'm Muslim, but um, it was a small dog. I'm not sure. Try to darken the lower part of the, of the legs 
keep focus up here. Especially when you're rendering this and you're giving it clothes or you're going to change it into a character design or a base character for your um, you know, for your portfolio. So any of these, by the way, um, this goes to Niall and Azir too, any of the best bodies that you've painted so far for the 14 day challenge, you can use them as bases for character design. All you have to do is put clothes, clothes on them, put it on your prof, uh, portfolio, and people will see them and hire you. They'll say, oh, I like the way you added clothes here. And you don't have to keep painting a body for each and every single one. A lot of um, artists do that, and they get uh, good, good profile, portfolio points for that. So any of the best pieces you find, maybe your day 14 or day 13, you can use it for as a template for your portfolio. Okay. And that's it. And I'll send it back to you and you can take a look at that. Ellie is... Yeah, one of them was like this, but white and really tiny. And the other one was bigger and longer than the other one. Yeah, it was a schnauzer. Yeah, it looked like this, right, babe? And the other one looked like this, but it was like half poodle, I think. Because it had that furry thing. Okay, so now on to um, Ade's. He gave me this pretty early today. Okay, so what you've done is the face that you've chosen, is, uh, the characters, the caricature is well drawn, but the skin type, the skin shade, sorry, the skin color that you've chosen is way too saturated. Because what happens with caricatures, you're not supposed to paint them unrealistically. You're supposed to paint them with realism. That's what makes them look funny, because they're realistically painted and it looks just like the person. So in order to achieve realism, what you have to do is make sure, even though you've manipulated the face to look weird, what you have to do is make sure that symmetries are still there. Things still make sense. Same size um, for each either eye, if unless the person has very severely asymmetrical face. Then you have to show that in the caricature and exaggerate it. Well, I think the one he's chosen is a non-cartoony one, Mattia. I think he's chosen a more realistic sort of rendering of it. Also, what I'm going to do is introduce a light source. You need a light source pointing from here, pointing down towards the, his face. What are the things that are going to get in the way of that shadow, of that light? Where are the shadows going to be cast? So there's some going to be some shadows here, some shadows here. You have one small one, but this nose is very big, so it's going to cast a big shadow. So I'm going to cast a tiny little shadow. Okay. Also, um, exaggeration of these uh, laugh lines. So give them, render them. Make them a bit darker. Make them look more realistic. Keep the cheekbone area here the lightest spot. Make sure you're not going too light too soon. So in order to render, what you really have to do, the best piece of advice for digital painting I can give you, is make sure that you're avoiding losing lines as much as possible if you want a realistic looking object. Or subject, I mean. Remember basics, remember where the line folds, where things are stacking. So you see these um, sketch lines that you have? These are sketch lines, the ones you have here for the chin. You don't need those when you paint. You can show them through shading. And slowly start revealing the form of the chin sticking out this way. I'm not really sure who this is. I have a butt chin for all I know. Gonna add them in because they're fun to paint. Hey you. Nice to have you here. Okay, for the nose you have this line. You see this line here? This is a sketch line. You don't need it. You have something like this going on. This is for a sketch. 
This is what you would do if you drew a caricature in like a, a you know, a fair and people were asking you to draw caricatures of them. When you render, you don't need those lines. All you need are the forms, which is the lights and the shadows, placing them beside each other in different value levels until you achieve form. The nostrils should seem to be hiding behind the, the laugh lines of the face, um, which doesn't make much sense. So what I'm going to do is make the nostrils a bit more visible and sticking out to the sides. And then I'm going to lay a shadow in the nostril area. And then carry some of that contouring to show where his cheekbones are. And you continue this until you achieve that realism. And that's what makes caricatures so freaky and so uncanny valleys when you have something that is supposed to be colored as a cartoon, colored as realism. And that's the essence of, of, of caricatures. That's the only time that happens and have their own genre of art. And make sure you don't just paint in a solid eyebrow. Make sure that it, that it makes sense and that it works with the skin and that it's slowly emerging. Keep that shadow there. Um, you don't have to make the eyes big uh, when you when you do caricatures. You can you don't have to make them large. You can make them small. You can make them however the size is for the person that you're drawing. Maybe their eyes are super small. Something like this looks a bit more effective than an anime eye or something that is a bit too large. So I would sort of shrink these up. And the liquify tool can really help you, really, really help you play with um, caricature, caricature art. You you, there's literally tools to just to <laughs> screw with. You see that? There's tools especially designed for this. Also, avoid like fruit or vegetable shaped heads. Make sure that if even if you're doing a caricature, make sure that the head shape still looks a bit human, but it's like funny human. It's like that's the point. It's to make them look like a exaggerated version of themselves. Not give them a whole new face shape. It's to um, give them the face shape they already have but exaggerate the areas that are there. So each face looks unique. Um, that's the liquify tool. Go to filter and go to liquify. And you can really play with that there. Also in caricature art, what we get is exaggeration of the greens and the purples in a face. So trust me when I tell you, exaggerate those. Introduce some purples and greens in areas where there is desaturation to make the skin look realistic. Do you see how the skin is starting to look realistic? And then adding in, even to the point of adding in... Um, pores, painting the pores, painting the hairs of the chin, and painting those. What greens in the face? There are greens in the face when the skin is light enough, and those are just the blood vessels shining through. It's basically uh, purple on yellow, because the blood vessel areas are usually very purpley, very bluish, shining through a very Caucasian, yellowy, beigey skin. So purple uh, greens would go in this area here. In areas that where the skin is stretching, so on the forehead, a little bit on the nose. I'm going to put a little bit of green on the lips to make it look like a smoker's lip. Ew. Sorry, I hate smoking. I'm going to merge that down. And then I'm going to get some purples. Actually, that's a bit too dark. I'm going to get some purples. Like a purpley gray. Purpley gray. And I'm going to add it in into the area where, actually bluish, make it a bit more blue. Add it into the area here. And then get a green again, another green. And then add it on top, and it looked like he's shaven. You see that? 
It's very fun. I had some purple there too. Caricatures are so much fun because it, you're really just having the time of your life when you paint these. Now he looks like he's shaving. And in order to add in the necessary details, you just have to get a nice stippling brush or get a nice small brush and paint in all the stubs of the hair. You know, it's not, after this, it's just your choice if you want to take that next level of detailing. And what I would do is get 100% on a small brush and just start stroking in on the outsides just to keep the, the mood light and funny. Just to so, show where his stubs are. You know, so he's like, hasn't shaved in a while. I mean, hasn't, yeah, hasn't shaved in a bit. Maybe like a 4 o'clock shadow or whatever you call it. And then add in spots on the nose. Not like this, a little different than that. To make his skin look uneven. Of course, if this guy had skin like that in real life, he'd be known for the most beautiful skin in the world. So you want to make it not beautiful to match his character, sort of. Oh, see. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Look at her. Sorry if I scared you. <laughs> I usually scare people when I do that. Okay, I'm going to make the hairs on the eyebrows a little bit more realistically scattered. Sorry for spam. You're not spamming. Just just talk however you guys want. Only assholes say that. Stop spamming me, Canva box. Sorry. <laughs> uh, some of you know what I'm talking about. Oh no. Okay. And there we go. Something that looks a bit more realistic. Rendered a bit more professionally and what I'm going to do is darken the area near the eye um, darken the area near the chin Richie just disappeared <laughs> he deleted me off <laughs> off Skype <laughs> can you guys believe that that's so unfair after all we've been, we went through okay <laughs> he's just one of the students Zeta I think he had like a change of mind about art. Okay, I'm going to bring in some of the light on the nose into the eyebrows because the eyebrows are very, very caveman-ish, so they're going to they're gonna get some of the light on the face. <laughs> yeah, I think he just he just changed his his mind about art. He wasn't really feeling it. need my soft brush for that. You guys, I've, I've said it before, um, the soft brush can really change your life when it comes to realism and photorealism. It really just does that airbrush thing. And there's some artists that use a airbrush tool when they paint traditional photorealism. And so there you go, you know, you have the digital equivalent. The forehead area is a bit too uh, soft, so I'm going to get the smudge tool, put it on a basic sharp edge tool, uh, brush I mean, and and then I'm going to stroke some areas here to make it look like the hairline is there. You see that, Ade? I'm going to make the hairline look a bit more natural. And then of course paint it over because in the smudge tool um, can look a bit fake. And then use it for the hair as well to give a more furry look for the hair. Make it a bit more natural looking. Okay, and then that's it. I would add a little bit more actually on this double or whatever you call it here. And there you go.